<laughs> Welcome to the Daily Dose. My name's Robert. That's my pal Susan. And joining us is our good friend Christina. Christina, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm well. Now, Christina, <laughs> you were kind enough to invite us uh, to your territory, your part of the world, your domain, as it were. Tell everybody who you work for, what you do, and uh, the, the community you serve. Sure. I work for the University of Maryland Parkinson's Disease and Movement Disorder Center. I am the program director, so I oversee all of the clinical research operations for the division. And I've been in the division for about six years now, and we serve not only Parkinson's disease patients, but any patients that have different movement disorders, such as essential tremor or dystonia. And um, I just love our Parkinson's disease community and all of the patients that we serve. You know, we hear that a lot, right, Susan, about people loving the community, the more they get to know them. Christina, what, what do you love about the Parkinson's community? I think it's an important thing to highlight. I love the fact that um, they're just so open to wanting to help to advance research in the field, to look for new treatment options, different alternatives. Most of the, the patients or people living with Parkinson's are very down to earth and friendly and just a pleasure to get to know, you know, and they're fun and they're super educated, they're engaged, you know, in their care, like, you know, and they're not afraid to, you know, voice, you know, what matters to them. Christina, is that in contrast at all to any other groups that you serve or you've been aware of through the years? Is there something yeah. about this population? That's, that's a great question. Actually, I work with different po patient populations over the years from you know, people and, you know, who've had cancer to mental health conditions to infectious diseases. And I will say that the Parkinson's disease community is completely different as far as they're being hopeful and just like eager to help and be engaged in their care. It's like a really stark contrast between the other patient populations. That's fascinating. Yeah, why do you think that is, since you have worked in a couple of different states, have you been able to garner any thoughts about why perhaps the Parkinson's community is more pliable and active in their, uh, what they're doing? I mean, I think that, you know, part of it is wisdom, you know, the fact of the matter is a lot of people living with Parkinson's are older, you know, so they do have a lot of wisdom and it's not a fatal condition. You know, they know they're educated, so they know that it's something that they can live with and that's it's manageable. And I think that makes a huge difference on their outlook. You know, they know eventually the symptoms may, you know, increase a little bit, but their treatment options that are available a lot more today than they were like 20 years ago. And I think it's been more um, education in general across, you know, the nation about the different initiatives and the treatment options and um, just education in general. So I think that probably plays a lot into it. And also, I will say a lot of the people living with Parkinson's, they have like really good support networks. Um, most of them are not walking this journey alone. And that makes all the difference in the world in and of itself. Yeah, you, yeah. You, your program uh, is, is called Within Our Reach. Uh, were you part of developing that, uh, that title, first of all? No, I was not. It was in existence before I joined the team, but I love, you know, the title and the theme. Um, and it's been, we're going into our 10th year now with that theme of Within Our Reach. And uh, we just want to give, you know, people living with Parkinson's hope that there are alternatives and that, you know, stress the positive things and what they can do practically every day to help them live well with the disease, such as exercising and, you know, other self-care strategies and having communication with their physician on a regular basis and things of that nature. You know what I love? I love your use of the word wisdom. It is an older population. It's a it's a disease that's been around for a long time. And the best thing we have to offer is 50 or 60 years old in its um, development in terms of medicine. Um, and a lot of people want to fight about that and be discouraged about that. And I, I just love the fact that the wis the concept of wisdom spreads across through that and because of the uh, support groups that that you mentioned 
cross-referencing and the desire to to be with each other and support each other i i love coming that coming under a, a heading if you will of mm-hmm. wisdom it's, yeah it's positive it's so it's so so nice christina could i be so bold as to ask you to stick around for another five minutes would you mind no not at all all right well that's the end of this daily dose we'll catch you the next one <laughs> <laughs>